Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another Pioneer deck tech, and today we're going to be talking about Simic Sphinxes in Pioneer. I'm very excited to bring this very odd list to you. As always, at the end of the video, let me know what you think about the list. Is there anything that you would change? Because there's definitely a lot of Sphinxes I didn't include in the deck that definitely were, you know, worthy of being in the deck. So just let me know in the comment section below what you think about the list as a whole. And if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, just let me know in the comment section below. So the one thing I want to mention before I get into this, so obviously you'll see this once we get into it, there's not a lot of green cards. It's really just the ramp that helps us play the Sphinxes, which that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to mention that there's no super spicy, you know, Sphinx that no one ever thought of or anything like that to put in the deck. The other thing I wanted to mention is there is a lot of pretty cool white Sphinxes that are in Magic, but unfortunately I didn't include any of those, mostly because, you know, a lot of those Sphinxes are kind of made for like blue-white, like mid-range control decks, kind of as like a finisher, um, and they didn't really fit this deck very well. Just ramping into them is not, they're not, it's not really that strong for the most part. So that's why I didn't include them. You know, I, I know a lot of people will mention that in the comment section below. And that was just something I wanted to let everybody know that that, that was my thought process. I originally had them in the original list and, you know, to play like two extra Sphinxes, I had to like rework the entire mana base. And at that point, it just really wasn't worth it. So I wanted to mention that. Um, so anyway, let's just go ahead and hop into the video here. So as our ramp package, we're playing four land worlds, four Elvish Mystic, and four Growth Spiral. Obviously, staple cards of the format. If you're trying to ramp in this format, that's pretty much the best way to go is with land worlds and Elvish Mystic. I considered playing Sylvan Carriage over Growth Spiral, but I really like Growth Spiral. I don't get to play it a lot, and I just thought it was overall kind of a stronger card for the most part because it still also ramps us. Just figured I'd mention that as well. All right. Next slide here is pretty much our non-Sphinxes and kind of non-ramp. So Cure, though, is ramp, which is very good. Um, you know, even though we're not doing some unfair things with Nykthos, it's still a very strong card. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card, which, spoiler alert, all of our Sphinxes are power 4 or greater. So we're going to be draw a card every time we play a Sphinx. Then we can minus 1 to untap a permanent, which means we can untap one of our lands, which can help cast all of our Sphinxes. So it just, it just fits really, really well in the deck. And then as our main uh, main board counter spell, we're playing four Stubborn Denial. It's basically a one mana negate as long as we have a Sphinx in play, which is pretty sweet. Um, you know, even if we don't have a Sphinx, half the time we can just force spike our opponent, which is really funny and it always irritates them every time it happens. I would say Stubborn Denial, probably one of my favorite blue cards, I would say, in the entire game just because of the gotcha factor. Then we're also playing two Brazen Borrower, just a good utility card. You know, obviously you got like the Disperse effect on the one side, return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand which is pretty sweet it's also an opponent control so don't try to bounce your own thing just kind of keep that in mind and then the other side is just a solid attacker 3-1 flyer flash it's just pretty good overall definitely a big fan of brazen borrower and then all right the moment you've been waiting for let's go and hop into the sphinxes here starting off we're playing four sphinx of foresight this card is very very cool because we may reveal this card from our opening hand. If you do, scry three at the beginning of your first upkeep. I believe this stacks as well. Let me know in the comment section below just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure this does. But anyways, it's a 4-4-4 four, 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 four flyer, and, the, and at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Just a really, really good rate. Feels good if we have it in our opener, because we get to scry three at the beginning. Kind of help fix our draw a little bit, which is pretty sweet. We're also playing four Defiler of Dreams. It's the blue Defiler from Dominar United. Four, three for five with flying. And then it has the Defiler text where, you know, we can uh, pay one blue or two life to replace like one blue. So for instance, Glyph Keeper would be three blue and then a Phyrexian blue, which is pretty sweet. And then whenever you cast a blue permanent spell, draw a card. So we play any Phoenix after, or not Phoenix, Sphinx after that. We just draw a card, which is pretty sweet. So definitely a big fan of Defiler of Dreams. We're also playing four Glyph Keeper, my personal favorite Sphinx in the entire deck. I lost to this card a lot when it was in standard. It was a powerhouse. Well, you know, powerhouse is a strong word, but this card was very, very annoying when it was in standard, and that's because it's a 5-3 for 5 flyer. Whenever it becomes the target of a spell or an ability for the first time each turn, counter that spell or ability. It's just really, really annoying. Glyph Keeper just, you know, doesn't like removal 
and obviously its ability shows on that you know they basically have to use like two removal spells or you know even some weird like target thing just to kind of get the shields down and then take it out glyph keeper is it kind of has like ward in a way it's like weird i don't even know how to describe it it's like a very unique ability that pretty much only like kira the great glass spinner also has which is pretty sweet so definitely a big fan of glyph keeper and then what's sweet is we can embalm it so if it ends up dying we just pay five blue blue and we get another copy of it that still is sphinx it's sweet triggers all of our other things which is pretty great so definitely a big fan of glip keeper my personal favorite card in the entire deck and then rounding out our sphinxes and the end there we go i don't know why it wasn't loading for me but anyways we're playing four dream eaters four three for four blue blue flash flying when it enters surveil four then when you do you may return target non-land permanent an opponent controls to its owner's hand it's an extremely good card uh, adds to the board triggers our cure help just draw a card it can draw another card if we have our blue defiler in play which is pretty sweet but it uh, bounces our opponent's best permanent pretty much which is pretty sweet so you know disrupts our opponent adds to the board it's exactly what we want our sphinxes to do and then we're also playing two unesh cryo sphinx sovereign this card is sweet pretty much the first like sphinx matters card pretty much that was printed in magic uh makes our sphinxes cost two less cast whenever it or another sphinx enters reveal the top four cards of your library an opponent separates those cards into two piles and put one in one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard pretty much like a factor fiction for the most part which is pretty sweet so that way every sphinx we play after unesh we're just going to get even more value from it so definitely a big fan of unesh it's just a pretty pretty sweet card in general so that's all of the non-land cards in the deck let's go and hop into the lands real quick it's not going to take us too long for the most part if it'll load there we go i don't know why it's taking so long for me to load anyways we're playing four botanical sanctum four breeding pool and four bark channel pathway staple dual lands of the format i got the breeding pool in red there just because if it's a little too pricey for you just swap it out for any extra dual lands or budget lands or basics that you have laying around you don't have to play breeding pool but it is one of the better dual lands of the format then we are also playing one Yavamaya Coast just because I had one slot left. You can play four though if you know you don't have the breeding pools. That's perfectly fine. It's a fantastic budget land. We're also playing one Beseju and one Ottawara. Obviously just really good utility lands in the format. Once again, they're very, very pricey. So if you don't have them, you don't, don't feel like you have to play them. But if you have them laying around, they're pretty solid for the deck as a whole. And then our last utility lands that we have here, we have two Cavern of Souls. Again, very, very pricey, but if you don't have them, that's perfectly fine. Just sub them out for some basics or extra dual lands you have laying around. But we're playing a Sphinx deck, and it's very, very nice to have that. Uncounterable, really great in against the control matchup. Then we're also playing two Lair and one Hall of Storm Giants fantastic in ramp decks just because the lair we can make really big and then the hall of storm giants we're gonna be able to activate that you know five and a blue seven seven with ward three is pretty sweet so definitely keep that in mind with hall of storm giants just because we make a lot of mana so whoop, i knocked something over my apologies but anyways it's a seven seven with ward three it's definitely very very good and then rounding out our lands below we are playing if it'll load two islands and one forest um and obviously you know we got like the egyptian theme going on because of the sphinxes and then the main um the main you know egyptian theme set is amonkhet so obviously we had to play the amonkhet basics i'm definitely a big fan of of these artwork i you know i played a lot of amonkhet and i opened a ton of packs so i have so many of these lands and like all my different commander decks and such like that um definitely a big fan of this artwork in general so don't go anywhere yet we still have to talk about our sideboard as well as some budget options so sideboarding personally what i would recommend you're gonna want some graveyard hey tormod script and soul guide lantern are definitely your best options that you can play slip out the back is fantastic i feel like i don't talk about this card very much but it's a very very good card for multiple reasons the main reason being so it's one in a blue target creature phases out and it comes back with a plus one plus one counter and that's good for two reasons because one we can use that as like a pseudo removal spell which is pretty sweet but we can also kind of use it as a protection spell which is pretty cool as well you know if any of our opponents try to kill our sphinx we phase it out and it comes back that kind of thing so definitely a big fan of slip out the back we're also going to want some counter spells right now i'm playing disdainful stroke and make disappear in my sideboard but you can also play cards like um like aether gust that's kind of a counter spell you can also play mystical dispute it kind of just depends on your local metagame you know feel free to change that out if you need to uh and that's pretty much how it is with all my sideboards you know if your local metagame looks different feel free to go ahead and switch out that sideboard 
And then the last thing we got to talk about as well is some budget options, which there's really not a lot. You can cut the brazen bars if you want. They're about six, seven dollars a piece. Feel free to just go ahead and cut those if you're looking to trim the budget. You can also trim the utility lands and some of the dual lands like the breeding pools, the cavernous souls, the Besaju and Ottawara. That really helps uh, keep the budget down on the deck. And pretty much if you just play budget dual lands, this deck is easily under $50. All the Sphinxes are extremely budget friendly, which is very, very cool. I think the most expensive not land card in the deck is the brazen borrower so if you cut those alone you're already cutting a little bit um but yes this deck is very very budget friendly so if you want to go ahead and pick this up for yourself i highly suggest it. it's a very very unique deck that you really don't see a lot of people play just because sphinxes don't really see a lot of play in 60 card formats which is kind of cool so all right well that takes us to the end of the video i'd like to thank everybody for watching this video let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the list what do you like what do you hate what cards would you change and if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos just let me know in the comment section below so i'm commander crane thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one